Welcome to Shiny New Clients, the marketing podcast that helps you attract shiny new clients to your business. We'll talk about social media, what makes people buy, how to go viral, and marketing psychology, all in 20 minutes or less. Whether you're a coach, a stylist, or a wedding planner, if you've got a service-based business to sell, this is the show you need to fill your calendar. I'm Jenna Warner, your new marketing coach, and this is Shiny New Clients. In marketing, there are cheat codes, okay? So they are there to help you, and they're going to help you get ahead faster. You're going to get eyes on you faster, and you're going to get clients faster when you know these cheat codes. And one of these cheat codes, we hate to hear it. We hate to say it. Actually, we particularly hate to say it because everyone says it differently, but it's niche or niche if you're American. But we're not American, we're Canadian. So it's your niche. Your niche is that specific person who you are trying to sell to, you are creating content to, who you want to come to your business. Now, people get stuck here. So if you already know your niche, I encourage you in these next few minutes to just get back in touch with them and refamiliarize yourself with them. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. And if you don't have a niche, I'm betting it's because you feel like a niche is going to limit you. Maybe you just can't decide. But for a lot of people, they hear niche and they feel like it's going to limit you and it's going to limit the amount of people that's going to come to you. And you want to sell to everybody, right? You want to sell to a million people and make a bazillion dollars. But your niche is actually going to help you do that. It's not going to hold you back. It's going to propel you forward. Let me explain. Do you have this store? We've got it up here. It's called like the big tall man store. Big and tall, big tall guy, tall, tall, tall dude guy store. It's something to that effect. Okay. If you are, say, this seven foot tall, broad shouldered, wow, what a specific example. If you are this tall dude, right? You have this problem where it's hard to find clothes. And if you walk into Walmart, you're going to go to the men's section, you're going to be like, oh, well, I wonder if they have three XLs today. I bet they don't because they didn't last time. I actually saw a video on TikTok of this guy who's like really, really, he's like seven feet tall. And he was talking about how hard it is for him to buy shoes. And then he'd gone to Walmart and they actually had like size 18 and he bought them all. Anyway, that's hard, right? That's frustrating. You're wasting a lot of time going into these stores, seeing if, if they have what you need, right? So if you're that dude, and you walk into the big tall man store, think about how good that feels. You are walking in primed to make a purchase. You are walking in primed to believe that they have what you need. You feel safe there. You trust them. You are more likely to make a purchase because this store is for you versus walking into Walmart and being like, ugh, you know, you have these yucky feelings. You feel like you're on the hunt. And if they have what you need, it's actually luck. Let's bring it back to something a little bit more relatable. Maybe you're listening to this and you're a web designer. You're a web designer and you create any kind of website. I know you can. You're freaking phenomenal. You're so skilled. You could create a website for anybody. But I, as an entrepreneur, as a female-owned service-based business, that's like what I have, we're like a course creator. I want to go to a web designer who's familiar with course creators. And when I find her, I'm going to be, I'm going to book with her so much faster because I know that she gets me. I know that she understands my needs versus an I make websites for everybody person. Okay. So that's level one. Stay with me here because I just described sort of a demographic, female owned service based business owner and course creator, right? Your niche does not need to be a demographic. Your niche does not need to be women in their 30s who live in metropolises, okay? It doesn't need to be that. Your niche can be the common experience or identifier of your target audience. So let's think of it a new way. Say you're a web designer and you specialize in Shopify integration. So people who are online sellers, they could be men, they could be retirees. They could be stay-at-home moms. They could be anything, but the common experience that they have and the solution they need is a website that integrates seamlessly with their Shopify website. See? So it's not a psychographic or demographic. It's the shared experience or it's a problem that you solve. All your clients have the same problem and you solve this problem. Once you know your niche or who exactly you are trying to reach, all of your content can speak directly to that person. 
And if you've ever had trouble with your copywriting or your captions or even coming up with ideas for posts on social media, once you identify this, it will make that easier. Let me give you another example. You know, I love examples. So say you're walking down the street, chop, 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 look, Starbucks, they go get a Frappuccino. And you bump into your grade one teacher. For me, that was Mrs. Jalufka. She had amazing sweaters. That is the main thing that I remember about her. They always had little like vignettes crocheted into them. You'd have like a little person over her shoulder and then, you know, like a little ski resort happening on her tummy. It was very cute. Anyway, my point is when you talk to Mrs. Jalufka, you're going to talk to her a certain way, right? And you know inherently, immediately how to talk to her very surface level. Oh, hi, Mrs. Jalufka. Yes, I learned how to spell fish. I got, got, you know, those essays really trip me up. Do you still wear those sweaters? Blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't need to think about it. You know exactly what to say to her. Now imagine you're walking down the street, trot, 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 trot. You run into your ex-boyfriend, okay? You're going to talk to him way differently than you talk to Mrs. J. You inherently know how to talk to him too. Oh, hi, Brad. How are you? Good. Oh, I'm so glad. But you know what I mean? You're going to speak to him a completely different way, and you don't need to think about it. Your brain just knows how to talk to Mrs. Jalufka differently than talking to Brad. And that is what's going to make it so much easier for you to create content. And then when your ideal client, when your niche sees that content, they are going to be like, oh, this is written directly for me. I'm going to go give this person all my money. I hope this has given you a new way to think about niche and to get back in touch with your niche and get back in touch with that ideal client. Because I think sometimes we can get really swept away and we start to forget about them when we're writing our content. So if we can just get back in touch with who we're writing this content for, who we want to see our marketing materials, then we are so much more likely to write amazing shit that makes us a million dollars. As always, there's free goodies down in the show notes. So make sure to check those out. And if you love the show, leave us a review. And by us, I mean me, because it really, really helps. And you'd be making my damn day. I hope I've made yours. Go make some money, honeys.